perfect.
Right, so I did it again. So I managed to fix the controller. I switched out the buttons for the di directional pads and the analog stick. So the analog stick works perfectly now. And I also fixed the C button. So in the previous video I couldn't do the special moves because the C buttons were wrongly configured. And the analog stick didn't work as intended. Because uh, when you moved it to the left uh, it was slower she would walk instead of run or uh, she, she walks uh, faster now uh, okay so uh, I fixed the controller and as you can see uh, the battles went much better and I actually think this has great controls when, when it's uh, properly configured so I placed the analog stick where the directional buttons are and I placed the directional buttons where the analog stick are in the configuration. So in the previous video I believe that uh, up and down in the C button the C buttons um, were wrongly configured so up were, were down and down were up that's why I couldn't do any special moves and um, as for the analog stick and the directional buttons I had placed them correctly but uh, that caused an issue with the analog stick so um, this time I switched them out I, I replaced the directional buttons with the buttons for the analog stick and I replaced the analog stick with the buttons for the directional buttons and uh, the directional buttons are not bugged so now uh, it works fine moving okay so let's see in a battle Gabriel you will click C left, C left, C left, C left, okay. Here's a fate. Okay. And there is a Titan mode game option. It will replace God. Okay, let's um, lower the sound. Okay, so I uh, fixed the. C buttons. I had placed them wrongly, configured them wrongly previously. So now we can do the special moves as you saw in the battles. And the analog stick uh, had the issue with moving to the right, no to the left. Uh, in Smash Brothers uh, the characters would always walk instead of run. Uh, well, it, um, in this game it worked fine to, to use the directional buttons. Unfortunately in Smash Brothers it didn't work there because uh, the directional buttons are used for posing. Okay, so I switched out those buttons. So now I use the directional buttons for the analog stick area in the configuration of the Project 64 emulator. And then I used uh, the, the I, I placed the directional buttons where the analog stick area are, and and I placed the analog stick buttons uh, where the directional buttons are and that solved the problem so that uh, can now do all the moves I faced Callisto so first of all if we click on the moving stick to point towards the enemy and then press C left and C down at once. We'll do this attack, grab our opponent. We need to be close. We'll pick her up and throw her. If we, if, if we press C up and C right, we'll do this attack. And then the hardest one. If, if she she moves backwards and then forwards with the analog stick and then then press uh, uh, C left and C up but with the C left being pressed first it's easy in, in, in this mode to do but in battle it is a little bit more difficult because you're stressed out by the opponent It's also possible to do a fast kick like that. And that's the attack that I know how to do. 
and when holding C we crouch like this then we can jump around like this and attack from air from the air And when we are close to the wall here, we click on R, the R button. Then she will automatically move like this. I believe we also need to move the directional button towards the back. Then she will automatically do this. Reposition herself. It's very useful when you're in a corner. When you're cornered. So it's not possible to use the alternate skins unless you fight yourself. So if for example, if fight one, uh, if, we, if, if one, if if there are two players playing as Callisto, we will have these two skins. If there are three players playing as Callisto, there will be another skin. And if there are four players players play playing as Callisto, there is a fourth skin. Uh, one of two skins are just a red version of Callisto, not that different from the main one, just with a red dress instead. And, and then there is the fourth one that is actually very unique, a green one with uh, unique clothes. So many characters have, have many different alternate skins, but there, there is no way to play as these alternate skins unless you fight yourself, which is a mistake, I think, from the developers. They should have had either a code to enable the player to play as uh, whatever version they want to play because if I play as the second controller, the third controller or the fourth controller, I will still be the normal Callisto uh, unless someone else is playing Callisto as well. So the alternate skins only show up when there are more of the same character present on the battlefield which is a brain. <coughs> In Smash Brothers you can select different colors before starting the battle. I believe it's a mistake that, that they didn't allow that in this game because they have a completely unique uh, like uh, like skins but they, it looked like different models because they have like uh, for example some of them have short hair and others have completely different dresses and such We do not crouch when we jump, then we just jump like this. And still attack. This one is better when avoiding their projectiles. Yeah, I think the controls are really good actually when they work as they should. So, so with the fully working Nintendo 64 controller I think they are easy pull off and and it's nice to play. Just make sure to place the the analog stick buttons where the directional buttons are and, and the directional buttons where the analog stick are. So you can use the analog stick to move around. Because using the directional buttons to move around like this uh, is not only annoying to the finger but uh, difficult to do when playing. Because the C button is in the middle between the C C C buttons and uh, and the directional buttons, so it's very difficult to have a finger there too. If you have the, the analog stick as the one you move around with, then uh, uh, it's much easier to play because you can easily move around while also clicking on the other buttons, including the C button. And yeah, I'm using a Nintendo 64 controller. It works great when, when uh, all the buttons are working pro properly. Okay. So I'm playing using the Project 64 emulator for the PC or computer. It's version 1.6. Highly recommended. Otherwise the, the sound would stutter. 
Also, if you leave them standing like this, they will scream, chant. We've already seen the other one do it. Uh, our character can also do that. Maybe we are too close. Uh, Yeah, I enjoyed playing as Callisto uh, in the quest mode. So there is a Titan difficulty we can unlock. It will replace the God or Hard difficulty. And then when you start uh, the quest mode, it will be like three players. Where you fight a uh, single character. Uh, as you, you fight as a single character against two other players controlled by the computer. Um, I believe also that sometimes it could be four players uh, it's uh, random if it's two players four players or three players that you will fight and it's very difficult they are also uh, on guard mode of course so you fight like two three or four enemies at once and they are uh, the best they can be in terms of AI that's uh, too difficult to be honest I tried it and it was really difficult because uh, it's very difficult to move away from all of them and do your special moves and such. And a few hits and you're down. But yeah, it was fun playing the ordinary quest mode. We played on easy difficulty. Might be more dif challenging to play on norm, uh, on medium and guard mode. Titan quest, I think, would be far too too dangerous. This game is, um, the, way, the way I see it, the graphics are great for a Nintendo 64 game. S the music is great and they have captured the battles. The four player battles are epic to watch, and watching the AI. And also the sing single player battles, uh, one versus one, are also cool to watch. And the three, three player battles. Um, I have realized that if you play one versus one, then uh, the camera is more zoomed in to the characters, so you see see them more up close. So the graphics look better in one versus one. If you play three characters at once, it will be slightly more out zoomed, but it will still look great. Uh, if you play four players, it will look the worst because then the camera is more out zoomed and uh, the facial textures and such won't be as uh, clear. So it will be a bit blurry in the face and such. So it looks worse when you play four players. But it's more fun. This game is uh, intended for four player action. I still enjoy the quest mode against one opponent. But I can imagine this game be being really fun if playing with uh, four friends or uh, three friends or just one friend and an AI opponent. You can play free for all, you can play two versus two, and you can play three versus one. Yeah, it's really good. And. Uh, also the roster battles, you can have uh, up to two, from two to four in, in one uh, group and then play one versus one, three, three play, uh, players or four players and have the AI too. There, there are a lot of older fighting games that didn't have the AI in VS mode which I thought was a very stupid decision. Like Air Gaze and some others which caused the game to be totally unplayable in VS unless you had someone to play with and play against. This game uh, has the computer too and uh, unlike many of the older games this even had the computer uh, playable as the player so you don't even have to f play yourself. That's very uncommon with older fighting games. It's, um, it's a feature of the Mugen engine, which is a 2D fighting engine from 1999. 
and it's a feature that is uh, often available in anime fighters like the Dragon Ball franchise but many of the f franchises didn't have that too and this game had it this is really good because the AI is not bad in this game it's actually really intelligent the computer in god mode so it's really entertaining to use to watch the AI fight the AI and different setups but playing yourself with a fully functioning Nintendo 64 controller is also very nice Can't run in the game, I think. Yeah, I like the controls with a fully functioning controller. Otherwise, it was pretty unplayable when it wasn't uh, properly configured uh, for the emulator. And uh, the music is great, the graphics is great. Uh, of course, the graphics are better with the emulator. You have the best graphics you can possibly have using the emulator. All the textures and such look much better th than the first video I uploaded of this game. Here he had the original uh, Nintendo 64 resolution. And I think at least Callisto was a fun play. I, I could probably try some other characters including Xena again. Now that I have full functioning controllers here. I have one controller. Okay, but uh, we'll do that another time. We'll exit the training mode. And by the way, in the training mode you can place the AI in everything from level 1 to level 9 in, in how difficult it would be. And you can have them on stand, standing, like I had. They will just stand there, and you can hit them. Uh, their health will never deplete. Okay, then, then there was the option to place them in defensive the default mode where they will parry all your attacks but won't do anything else and then there is the option to let them be AI controlled so they will fight and you can even play place your own character in AI control for example you have the computer here, the Nintendo 64 computer um, Callisto, Callisto can even have a four player vs mode here Callisto. Callisto. okay let's take a look at all the Callistos <coughs> so this is Callisto's stage we will start that stage and uh, we can see the red variation there, then there is a green one ok, so I can't move now because I placed my own character under AI control but they are on stand so we have uh, level everything from 1 to 9 uh, like in Smash Brothers we will place it on 9 and we have defend, they will defend against uh, an attack but we can't attack as yes, we are now also an AI if we place it under full AI, we can just watch an endless fight because the health is never gonna be depleted here. It's a training in, in practice mode. So the AI is the best it can be, and everyone is controlled by the AI, and it's the practice mode, so the health is limitless. These, these are all the Callistos of the game. Sadly, they didn't allow the player to pick uh, a variation they prefer. The, the three other Callistos only uh, show up when, when you have more than one Callisto in the battle. If there are two, the white one show up. If there are three, I believe the red one or the green one show up. I'm not sure. I believe it's the red one. And th then the fourth one will be the green. There is no way to play as the green, the white and the red. If... if uh, 
if there are no other Callistos in the battle. Which is a mistake, I think, by the developers. Should have been an optional uh, skin you could just pick before the battle. Because, yeah, the, the, the original one is obviously the best one, but could be fun to just pick something else as variation. Uh, so the other ones are also from the show. Uh, they showed up uh, in other parts of the show. I believe most of the shows has the black look. Uh, in the late uh, fifth season, I believe, she has the white look. And then the red one is just an alternate skin for this game, I think. But the green one, I believe, is uh, also from the show. And uh, unique. Okay, so in practice mode you can also watch the AI, and unlike in other modes it will never never stop fighting. I believe in air gaze you could also do this in in uh, you could do not you could not place them under AI control in in air uh, you uh, uh, sorry in in air gaze which is a fighting game released in 1998 and this game Exina uh, Warrior Princess Talisman of Fate was released in 1999 for the Nintendo 64. I believe Airgaze was released for the PlayStation 1 and uh, an arcade, uh, but there are differences between the arcade version and the PlayStation 1 version, and the PlayStation 1 version is more recent. Uh, and the PlayStation 1 version, unlike uh, the, the the arcade version, had uh, more Final Fantasy 7 characters and more mini games, but had worse graphics. But if you play it on an emulator for the PlayStation 1, it will have better graphics. Okay, and uh, in that game. They did a mistake because an arcade doesn't need a VS computer mode because you you play against uh, the computer in the arcade mode and that's the only mode and then then you have a VS player mode if two players play at once but um, there are no VS computer and they forgot to add that to the PlayStation One title but in the practice mode you could uh, place everyone under AI control and you could. Uh, uh, also choose the opponent for the computer, but the problem was that uh, they have unlimited health in, in the practice mode, just like in this mode. So you could uh, record some cool fighting, but uh, you can't really enjoy it. Um, in, in this game, you, you can uh, have four players fight like this, which is pretty decent. Okay, done. Um, so the other modes, game options, yes mode. So we have the Caesar. one versus two, and then uh, three players, four players, and the colors here make it possible to change teams. Everyone with the blue color are allied. Everyone with the green color are allied. Everyone with the yellow color are allied, and everyone with the red color are allied. Uh, I only have one controller connected to the emulator, that's why everyone else, play 2, play 3 and play 4 are computer controlled. But player 1 is controlled by my Nintendo 64 controller. Unlike, un unless I go to this place here, with the Nintendo 64 symbol and click here, then I can place any one of these under AI control. And uh, have them fight with and against other AIs. Okay. I could also play myself and against uh, and with other computers or with friends. In in the roster mode, you can play everything from two to, to four uh, characters in a team. And then uh, you pick four characters for each team, so four x four pretty much. Uh, so each roster consists of four fighters. You can have up to four f uh, rosters fight at once. Uh, and uh, if I pick the same character, they will have alternate skins. So we'll take a look at the alternate skins of everyone. First, we will uh, pick the computer. And yeah, it sucks that we can't pick the other looks for the characters when we do not have more than one of them in the battle. So, if we, for example, only one player plays as Cena here, then she will always look uh, as her ordinary look. She won't have the alternate looks. There's no way to to um, <coughs> pick the other looks manually, which is a shame. Okay, 
Here everyone is uh, different teams. Okay, we'll just pick this stage, Xena stage. Take a look at her alternate skins. So we have creates like uh, different looks based on the throw, different episodes of the throw. They are well made. It's just that uh, it's a frame we can't uh, select them for the battle. The only way you can have them show up like this is when everyone plays as Xena. And that's sad. Because some of the alternate skins are pretty cool. Like that uh, ninja skin or pirate skin or whatever. And then there are two others too. I'm not, I'm not sure. is in loose. But yeah, with a full functioning controller this game was actually fun in the quest mode and in VS mode too. I might return to it and play the other characters in the quest mode. I believe the Titan quest mode is too difficult because you face uh, two, three, or four characters and all of them are allied against you, which is very difficult. And they are on the maximum difficulty uh, too. Everyone started to look uh, different all of a sudden. I don't know what she is there, if she is some kind of druid or berserker or whatever. There she looks like a pirate, I think. And the other one is a ninja, probably. The other one probably a druid. The original one is just the warrior princess. This one certainly must be a pirate. It's a bit of a waste to have all those skins and then then uh, not uh, properly allow the player to select them. Okay, we only have three options: accept, cancel, and choose team. You can uh, select the others. Ah, so we have the one where, where the second one is the one where he doesn't have his armor and throws his head. Then we have a version where he has his armor, um, but no cape and his blue colors instead of red. Then we have a version where he has a cape and the blue colors, but no helmet and no armor. So as I said previously, the actor of uh, this character, Caesar, Julius Caesar, he um, he also played Eomer in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and uh, play play is is the main character in the TV show The Boys. I I watched two seasons of The Boys. I still have to watch the third season. I am waiting for every episode to come out because uh, I watched uh, uh, be beyond the. Uh, Whatever her name is, uh, one of the movie and show reviewers on YouTube. 
uh, and uh, she said that it was a good idea to wait on all the episodes before watching it. She got to see, uh, beyond the trailer, she got to see every episode at once, but everyone else need to wait uh, one episode per week. So, uh, when there's only one episode left, I will watch the show. Yeah, this actor is the main character in The Boys too. Call upon his archers to shoot arrows at the enemy and uh, <coughs> his siege engines, the catapults, can fire boulders at the enemies too. It's more entertaining, I think, to, to watch the four player battles and then have a finale. But even when there are only two remaining. The camera is still more outzoomed compared to when you fight one versus one, so uh, the textures look a bit worse from from a distance. That's why one versus one is also cool because you have the camera more zoomed in on the characters. You get to see them more up close. I think that this game should get a remaster. They have released some uh, Nintendo 64 games for the Nintendo Switch, which is both a console and a handheld and this game should probably be one of the games they should um, consider releasing but their show isn't popular anymore uh, but uh, the game is actually really good so makes sense it's a good fighter and brawler it's more like a brawler uh, by the way, Naruto Gekido Ninja Tyson 4 also has a 4 player mode that plays exactly like this game um, with the GameCube controllers instead of Nintendo 64 controllers and uh, it's basically the same, you can play one vs one, you can play tag team battles it is pretty much the roster mode but it's one vs one tag team battles, they are not 4 players and then it has 4 player mode which is pretty much like this, you can have 4 characters fight at once in a stage, uh, they can be allied, 3 vs 1, 2 vs 2 or they can be free for all. And it's exactly like this, just Naruto instead, with better graphics of course because it's for the Gamecube and then it handles Wii, first 4 games are for the Gamecube and, and then there are 3 more games for the Wii. And the final game only released in Japan for for uh, for the Wii. The Wii and GameCube they had the same GameCube controllers. The Wii also had some uh, other controllers, of course, the Wii modes. But you could play games with the GameCube controllers on the Wii. And the GameCube uh, games worked on the Wii too, so it was back uh, backwards compatible. And the graphics were just slightly improved on the Wii. The V is slightly more powerful, but not much. <coughs> you can say that the, the Nintendo 64 were competing against the PlayStation 1 and the, the, the Dreamcast <coughs> and then the Nintendo GameCube uh, was competi competing against the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. And, and then the Nintendo V was competing against <coughs> the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, but unlike the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, the Wii had way worse graphics, but they're still, uh, I believe, uh, better at selling because uh, the unique way of playing with the Wii mode, the remote controls, uh, was hugely popular. So, so the Wii ended up selling more, but had way worse graphics. And the graphics of the Wii are slightly above the Nintendo GameCube. It's almost the same console, just with unique remote controls and such, which was the main traction there. Okay, we have seen Gabrielle in the l l last fight in the previous episode. We can check uh, FNA, her skin. We'll check all the skins. 
Okay, F and A. Her stage is the forest. So these are her skins. She has the same look pretty much. She has a helmet on one of the models. She has the same uh, like skirt and uh, bikini. Use different uh, colors. One of the models had uh, a helmet. Which is a nice uh, touch. Fuck, I did a mistake again. I don't know why I always do that mistake. Uh, for forget to place characters under AI control. Also, I need to click on start button, not the A button. Otherwise, start the battle or move to the stage selection. Okay. Okay, and uh, F and A, the forest. So, everyone versus everyone, free for all. With all the unique skins of F and A. Sadly, only show up when there are four F and A's in the battle. Still cool to take a look at them. There are also a bunch of codes you can do in battle. One code will uh, make it snow. Another code will uh, <coughs> slide the, the stage. I don't know what that means. Stage will be will slide. And also there was one that would make the heads much bigger. Probably similar to the James Bond GoldenEye codes where they, the, the heads become huge. And there, then there is a, a, a code that will make every character uh, small. I haven't seen either. And uh, there is... Um, I believe there, there is a code that will change demise so he won't look like uh, a demon anymore. He will look like a rabbit demon. So they added some codes to change demise's skin and... Uh, Gabrielle can also, I believe Gabrielle is Gabrielle in most fights, but if it's, if it, if uh, Cena is in the battle, then then Gabrielle will be Hope, and there is a code to prevent her from being Hope against Cena. Uh, yeah, so it's a uh, shame that they didn't add uh, the option to play as the skins, uh, because there are a bunch of buttons that are not in use. The A and B buttons are only used in the menu when you select. Uh, Stuff, but the, the L button is not in use. Could have been perfect for selecting skins, I believe. It's a shame no one is gonna hack this game and, and uh, enable all the skins of the game so that we could play as every different look uh, without fighting ourselves, so to speak. Would have been nice to play the story mode as, uh, with one of the other looks, maybe, of a character. Because they did put, uh, put in effort to make uh, varied looks for the characters. Uh, F and it didn't have that many different looks, unfortunately. Uh, mostly color uh, changes. Most of the characters have uh, like different models. Which is very nice to see. Okay, so yeah, I, I think this game was really good. But it's really important to have the Nintendo 64 controller properly configured, otherwise you can't really play it. Because you will have a hard time uh, moving and doing moves, and that will ruin the experience for you. So yeah, I recommend just watching CPU vs CPU battles in this game, could be fun. Looks like battles from the show and uh, I thought it looked great. I also recommend uh, <coughs> playing it in single player and playing with friends in VS mode or against the computer. Um, and training first or practicing first in the practice mode. Uh, I recommend using an emulator when playing so you can have the maximum graphics. I recommend Project 64 as that emulator is uh, the one with the best graphics. Uh, unfortunately the latest version, the 2.4 version, had problems with stuttering music. 
Uh, it's the 60 hertz that's the problem. For some reason, it's lowered, and uh, no matter how many times you select 60 hertz, it doesn't help. There's a bug probably in the tool, but uh, with emulator. But when I used uh, used uh, I, I installed the 1.6 version of the emulator, when I used uh, the 60 hertz version of 1920 1080p resolution, HD resolution, then it worked fine. So I recommend the Project 64 1.6 version with this game and uh, the 1920 1080p resolution with 60 hertz. So there are like other options like 1920 1080p 25 hertz, 30 hertz, 40 hertz, etc., 50 hertz. And I, I believe uh, 60 hc or or 8 whatever. Is, is what you should go for if you don't want lag uh, in, in the when stuttering. Okay, let's check uh, Ares and his alternate skins on his stage. Ah, so he has, uh, he has the white one, I knew about it. Then, then he has one where he has the upper body, uh, bare upper body, and then he has another one, a colorful one. So if I will return to this game, we will play the other characters in the quest mode. Uh, because I might want to try out the other characters too, now that they have fully functioning controllers. Uh, I also might try out the VS mode and play it myself. But we'll see. Ares wins. That's the normal Ares. His regular look. Okay, so yeah, really impressive Nintendo 64 game. Probably didn't do too well because um, not many people uh, bought games. Maybe so the problem was in 1999 when this game released. I saw it in the store and I checked it out and I really wanted it, but the problem was that uh, you know I was like nine or ten back then years old so I needed my parents to buy it I tried to you know nag them into buying it but failed and later the Nintendo 64 became obsolete and such you know uh, I did play it on the emulator like back in 2008 2007 I didn't really play it I, I I believe I played it using a keyboard and that's not the same thing I watched the AI fight back then. I had on my old YouTube channel, I had a similar video where I didn't play it, but I, I watched AI fights. It was one video. I didn't have more than one video of this game, and it was a video where the AI fought itself. Uh, I did probably fight the, in, the, in the game using a keyboard, but it, that's not uh, recommended. You, you need uh, to use a controller. PlayStation 4 controller would work fine because it's easy to configure, but with the Project 64 uh, emulator it might be difficult to set it up. It automatically did connect to the... it, it did uh, recognize the GameCube controllers and the Nintendo 64 controllers. I bought a, an adapter for the Nintendo 64 controllers already back in 2009. I believe I imported in, in 2008 and 2000, or 2009, I don't remember was around the time when I was 18 years old. I either I was still living at my parents' uh, house, or I had moved out. Um, but uh, it was in the beginning of my adult life, before I was placed under a conservatory for 11 years. So I didn't have any conservatory back then. Uh, I believe also that I must have still been living at home. It was just before I moved out. I believe in in late 2008. I um, ordered a bunch of stuff from the internet. Yeah, I might not have had permission to do so. I believe I... <laughs> Back then you didn't need to use a uh, code when you bought stuff from the internet. There, were, there were no mobile ID or bank ID. So if, if you got access to, for example, your father's or mother's uh, credit card, the only thing you needed to do was write in the numbers and, and then you could 
get your stuff um, sent to you. But um, in uh, in modern day uh, in Sweden and such today, you need to also um, identify yourself with the mobile ID or bank ID and. Uh, that wasn't required back in 2008, so I probably bought a lot of stuff. Uh, not a lot of stuff, but I bought, uh, I believe I imported the Naruto game, two Naruto games. Naruto Gekudo Ninja Taisen 4 and I believe an, a later one, uh, Shippuden one. I also imported uh, a Nintendo DS and an Xen Replay for the GameCube for the Wii. I, I believe I imported... Uh, um, imported a bunch of stuff that uh, totally I probably spent nah, uh, I believe about 100 dollars probably uh, but anyway using uh, parent my parents bank accounts uh, because uh, unfortunately I uh, I believe um, Maybe I used my own bank account after I moved out of my parents' home too. So maybe half of the stuff I ordered from Play Asia and other stuff, other places, uh, I believe, uh, like, uh, I believe uh, some of it was ordered us using their credit card without permission, and uh, the other half of it I probably ordered myself before I uh, got the conservator trip enforced me and then the reason I got that was because I had been uh, well I uh, was given a diagnose an autistic diagnose in my teenage years in, in ninth grade in 2006 and then I had been uh, what should I say I was abused uh, uh, I, I was uh, uh, let's just say I some girls used me economically, and then they blamed that on the on the autistic features or diagnose. And then, uh, yeah, I, I got uh, my my adoptive mother uh, talked me into accepting a good man, which is like an advisor when it comes to money. He's supposed to give advice. It's still up to me if if I want to follow the advice, and then then I can um, I can. Um, uh, exit the, the, the situation at any time, they said, but uh, before I knew it, he had uh, applied to become a guardian or conservator, and all of a sudden, I had a guardian and conservator. He became a guardian or conservator. The difference between a good man in Sweden and a conservator or guardian is that a good man is only giving advice. He can take his own decisions when it comes to your, to your budget, but he cannot uh, take any decisions outside of the budget. So uh, if he if he wants to take other decisions, he needs to first uh, have my approval. But uh, the conservator and guardian, which is the same thing, just in 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 UK and Australia and some other countries, it's called a conservator, and I mean a guardian, a legal guardian. And then in the United States, in some states it's called a legal guardian, and in other states it's called a conservator, conservatorship. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's the same type of settlement that Britney Spears had, but the difference is that I didn't have it over my person. So you can have it over your economy, and you can have it over your person, or you can have it over both. And uh, I believe if you have it over your person, then the guy can, uh, or a uh, woman, the man or woman uh, can take every decision in your private life. I didn't have that. Um, but if you have it over the economy, they still kind of rule all decisions over your money. And if you want to use your money, you need their permission. So you couldn't, I couldn't, for example, move abroad without his permission. And I couldn't buy stuff without his permission. Of course, he allowed me to. I believe I got like... Uh, fifty dollars each week and of course I was allowed to use those man that money anyway I wanted in local stores but uh, and uh, I believe between t 2009 and 2017 in Sweden I was still allowed to have a, a internet bank uh, so I could order stuff on the internet even with a guardian but 
only with the money that I got each week. I wasn't allowed to use my savings uh, in, in other accounts. Uh, if I had like um, 200,000 Swedish crowns in a different account, I wasn't allowed to use that money. I only was allowed to use the, the $50 a week that I got. Okay, but with that money I could buy stuff on the internet. Uh, but uh, in 2017 they removed the right for people under conservatorships and guardians to, to have an internet bank. So after 2017 it became impossible to, to buy stuff on the internet. Until 2020 in May when I finally got rid of the conservatorship after 11 years. And uh, unlike Britney Spears I didn't have over the person so he couldn't decide stuff like um, in my private life, you know, about my apartment and he couldn't uh, control me in my private life. What he could do was he could control my money and my decisions when it came to money. So for example, when I bought a dog in 2011, uh, the, the conservator could take the dog and sell it and I had no say in, in the matter. And the uh, same is true for other decisions. So any decision that had to do with money, he could interfere and uh, change my decision. and overrule my decision and uh, pretty much he was in charge over my money and my decisions. Also, I believe it's more than that, I wasn't allowed to sign deals. If, if I signed a deal, uh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't, uh, I, I believe if I signed a deal, he could change it at any time. I didn't have adult rights back then. As, uh, if he had no problem with me signing the deal, then I could do it, but if he was against it, then I wasn't allowed. So you can say I was treated like an underaged person between the age of 19 and 30, between 2009 and 2020, because they placed me under a conservatorship. But the, the conservatorship that I had was only over the economy, so, so it wasn't as... Uh, as uh, is uh, uh, all encompassing as the Britney Spears one where they had over her person too. So uh, it wasn't uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, what's the name, uh, word, uh, it wasn't as uh, uh, wide in scale but uh, was still not nice to have uh, an, 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 a conservatorship over your economy. Okay, and it set my uh, set me back in my career eleven years. So anyway, I think we have seen enough. We have watched a few of their alternate skins. We watched Ares. Maybe we should watch Alaska, uh, Velasca too. We haven't seen her. Okay, Velasca. I believe this is our stage. Start it. Okay, so one of her skins have the helmet. That's her second skin. And she has one where she has a red dress without the helmet. She has her normal look, of course. And then there is a fourth one. Ah, I did this mistake again. I don't know, I always do that mistake. Okay, now, computer versus computer. Let's just skip to the battle. So we have a red dress version, <coughs> clearly different from the others, and the version with a helmet, just like Ephne. And then there's a fourth one, probably with different colors compared to the normal one, maybe even different clothes, we'll see. 
believe she has a skirt there. It doesn't with her normal look, it's slightly different, I think. So one of the alternate skins were taken out. The player one is the normal one. Yeah, I did import a few games back in the day and other gear like the action replays which is cheating devices for the GameCube, the Wii and the PlayStation 2. Those uh, devices you place in a CD in the console and then you can add, uh, there are a bunch of codes already in, in uh, included and then you can through the internet download more codes. Uh, I used to anyway and uh, then you can do things like give uh, characters maximum health, uh, maximum energy, everything unlocked and such. And don't need to finish the game to get everything. You can cheat and you can unlock everything. That's why I bought it. So I wouldn't have to unlock everything the, the boring way. You know in Dragon Ball Z, but I think Ichi for example too. You need to play through an entire RPG story mode to unlock everything. And that's not enough. For some characters you need to win prizes and combine them and such. <coughs> so I just prefer to have everything unlocked. With an emulator it's easier, you just download a save file from the internet and get everything unlocked. But with the consoles it was more difficult back in the day. When you had no USB drive. If the day arrived it became more easy. You place the USB drive in one of the USB slots and then you can move over the save files uh, but uh, I believe they needed to be unique for the action replay system because they had a certain format I believe and moving over the files so, yeah but anyway <coughs> I, I used to import things like that from American or Asian sites I believe I got the action replay stuff from American sites or English sites and then I got uh, the Japanese games from uh, Play Asia, an Asian site where you can import games and such. Okay. Anyway, this battle is almost over. Only two remaining. Third Velaska. And the first one. The original. <coughs> okay, so this video <coughs> it was pretty long. We finished the quest mode with Callisto and we watched all the alternate skins. We will watch all of them if we haven't watched. I believe Yoxer is still remaining and maybe Autolicus. Uh, but, um, and the, the Chinese girl too. We'll check those three. Uh, but after that, we will end the video. Then we might return to this game and play the other characters in the quest mode later. And I might have actually try the Titan quest mode at one point with Callisto, but we will lose. That's too difficult. Uh, and uh, the VS mode, we might return to it and play against the computer. Together with one computer against two others, maybe, or free for all. I don't know. Uh, but um, maybe later I will play uh, multiplayer with uh, someone else as well. Okay. Alaska, let's check is it Oxer. Okay, Oxer has his own stage here. He has his armored look, the original one. He has his, um, his second look where he has no armor. 
and no helmet. Then there's a third look and a fourth look. I don't know which one is uh, what look, but I think his third look is the the blue var variation of his uh, unarmored look. And in that version, he just has blue colors instead of red, so simple uh, red skin. And then he has an armored version where he doesn't have the helmet. It's pretty cool as well. So there are a bunch of cool alternate looks in this game for each character. So this game is fun to play single player, but it's more fun to play in multiplayer, most likely. It's intended as a four player brawler, similar to Super Smash Bros, but a different in style. And it plays exactly like the Naruto game, Naruto Gekudo, Ninja Tyson, and its sequels, Naruto Shippuden, uh, uh, Clash of Ninja Revolution, and uh, yeah. So yeah, it's very similar, you will, you will see the similarity, unfortunately. Fourth game of Naruto, Ikido, Inya Tyson. Uh, it didn't have the four player mode in CPU vs CPU battles, only in, in, in player play uh, plays. So that's why we are not using it. Uh, but um, in the final game from 2010, Shippuden game, you can have the AI fight the AI like this in four player. And it's very similar. Use Naruto instead. And it's actually fun, the, the super moves are much more badass, much more impressive. There are real cinematics there, real explosions and such. In this game they are a little bit uh, underwhelming, but it's a Nintendo 64, so... They are good for the 64, I guess. The blue, the yokes are one there. Another fight. So when you get placed under a conservatorship, it's very difficult to get out of it. You know, I spent three years trying to fight them. Now, first I tried in the court, but failed. My parents, my adoptive parents, didn't help enough. I could have won in 2010. If they had done a better job yeah, at actually aiding me in the court, but they were ignorant and didn't see a difference between a good manship and a conservatorship. There's a huge difference. The, the main difference is that uh, the good man needs my approval for every decision outside of budget, budget while uh, the conservator doesn't need my decision in, in anything. Um, so he's a dictator pretty much. And uh, he, he rules over me pretty much. And uh, my parents thought it was the same thing. They totally ignored the detail that good man means I have a say and uh, conservatorship means I have no say. That's a huge difference. And uh, they didn't do enough to help me get out of that situation. My adopted mother did help me in the court in, t in May 2020, but that's 11 years af after I wanted her help. So, they didn't do enough. Could have won in 2010 if they had aided, but they taught good man and conservatorship was the same thing. You didn't know the difference, and that's not an excuse, because uh, you have Google, you can go to the internet, you can search for it, you can look up the details, and if you realize that your son no longer has any say in anything uh, about his money and such uh, then, then maybe you should help him get out of it bef because otherwise you will get the hate because I can promise that I hated on my parents for 11 years and uh, that's uh, my adoptive parents and uh, that's because they didn't aid me in getting out of that conservatorship I had a stranger as a conservator uh, I didn't have my parents as a conservator conservatorship. I didn't have my parents as, as conservators. I 
had a stranger appointed by the court so, because my parents, adopted parents, were too cowardly to too cowardly to want the job. They were afraid it would lead to conflicts between me and them. That's why they didn't want to become uh, a good man. But uh, there were conflicts anyway. Uh, but um, yeah. I spent the years 2009 to 2012. Uh, I believe uh, first I lost in court in October 2010. Then I started to, you know, use threats and violence. And after that, <laughs> I got a lot of shit with the psychiatry and such because of it. And, and uh, yeah, let's just say that from 2014 and uh, until 2020. Things calmed down quite a lot, but I still had a conservatorship until I took the case to the court in May 2020 and got rid of it. And my mother only helped because I nagged her about it, but otherwise she would probably not even have showed up. And the father by that point uh, was one month from dying. He had Alzheimer's. He got Alzheimer's in 2016. And in 2020, he had, uh, when I was in court, about the conservatorship that was in May 2020 then father had one more month to live because he died in in June 2020 he was in an elderly home and was demented uh, but I didn't dislike my adoptive father I just disliked that he didn't help me enough uh, in getting rid of the conservatorship uh, mom on the other hand I did, uh, didn't like as much as my father because she is the cause I ended up in a conservatorship. <coughs> she, uh, she's the one that talked me into applying for a good man, promising me I would have final say in everything, and I could exit at any time if I didn't like it. And all of a sudden he became a conservator and I had no say, and it would take 11 years until I got rid of it. So, so in my opinion she lied me in the face and, uh, and it cost me 11 years and and also she that was not the first time she lied she also were the one that went to the child psychiatry in Sweden and spoke about me to the psychiatry which caused me to get a lot of unfavorable <coughs> text in my journal that followed me later uh, you know when I we were fighting the conservatorship in 2009 to 2012. Uh, after I lost in the court, that became like a conflict between me and the conservator and others uh, involved. That ended with me being locked up in a, in a mental institution because uh, they sentenced me for threats against him. And uh, well. I got sentenced to mental care. It took one and a half years until I was out of there. So between the summer of t 2012 and uh, I believe February, March 2014, I spent in that mental facility. And uh, yeah, uh, in, in, when I got sentenced, they used a lot of old journals against me to say I had mental problems and. Uh, my mom was the one that had initiated that contact with the child psychiatry. She, she went there and spoke a lot. And, and also, <coughs> uh, when I became an adult in December 2008, she tricked me into continue moving over my journal from the child psychiatry to the adult psychiatry, stating it was for my benefit and good for me and would help. Uh, but it uh, it was proven later that I should never have done that. But I, I had no clue what they had written in that journal, you know. They wrote it between uh, two thousand or the year 2000 and the year 2001, and between the year 2004 and the year 2008. But, you know, I had never read it. I only read it for the first time in 2012. And it had been used against me when I was uh, placed under a conservatorship in 2010 and also used against me when I was locked up in the institution in 2012 so uh, had I known what that journal contained 
I would have never allowed the adult psychiatry to use it. And uh, of course my adopted mother was guilty of a lot of shit that was written there. Of course the psychiatrists the ones the, the psychiatry are the ones that have been biased against me and my sister man. but my my adopted mother is the one that thought it was a good idea to ask the psychiatry for help and that's why she's guilty of uh, the help I received which wasn't help, they sabotaged me they fucked me over and it's all her fault for going there in the first place you don't go to the psychiatry with your adopted ch children because the psychiatry will give them a label and then when they become adults they risk being placed under conservatorships and such okay uh, so we have checked every character yeah I have a problem with uh, authority in Sweden especially the psychiatry and I don't like my adopted mother because she involved me with, with those people it cost me 11 years Okay, then then I lost two more years due to COVID-19, you know. I had spent uh, the years 2009 to 2012 at home, the conservative trip, and then I spent one and a half years in the institution. Then from 2014 to 2020, I spent uh, more years at home with the conservative trip, and then I was rid of the conservative trip, but then it was the middle of the in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, so it took two two more years of being at home, and now it's been like, probably in February they removed the restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, so three months now uh, since they removed the restrictions. So for the last three months, I have been able to act freely without the conservator and without any restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, I believe we're done here, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching, I will probably return to this game later, see ya, bye.